Um, ignore the peace sign. Okay, basically, I am talking about this book. Why am I talking about this book? Because I just finished this book. It was strongly, strongly recommended to me by a friend, which I think this is actually her favorite book. Which, I mean, I thought it was okay, but like, if you like this book, I'm not gonna really hold anything against you because it was good and it's like really pretty. Like I love the little clocks with the little school at the end. I think that's cute. It's on both sides and it's a really pretty book after all. And it's, you know, different because the title is They Both Die at the End. You don't really see a lot of titles like that. And um, the book, the concept behind it is very interesting. They live in a world where they have this thing called Death Cast that tells you the day you're gonna like it tells you the day of that you're gonna die and so you don't know exactly when you're gonna die or how it's gonna happen but you just know that sometime within the next 24 hours you're gonna be dead so that's fun um and because of this death cast being a thing all these different apps have been invented like uh you could like blog your last moments or you could uh, have a last friend app, which is actually what the main characters do. They, you, it's an app where you can find someone to spend your last day with that maybe is also having their last day at the same day or just a random person that wants to support people that might not have any loved ones to say goodbye to, which is really, really sweet. Um, and then apparently there is this one app where like, you, if you have like the most fantastic, interesting death, uh, they, they would donate, um, and if you film it and put it on this app or website, whatever, they, um, they would, like, give your family a bunch of money, which is really sad, messed up, and dangerous, but the thought of it was cool. I thought it was, like, slightly mentioned in this book, like, just the idea that, like, something like that would happen. It's just interesting, although it is very a cool thing. Anyways, basically, yeah. Um, we follow these two characters, Rufus and Mattino. I'm calling him Mattino. I don't really Matt too. I'm saying Mattino, okay? Um, um, and they just kind of they kind of just like bump into each other on this app that's supposed to, that allows you to find your last friend, and then they just spend the day together and maybe they have a relationship that's going. I'm not. This is not the spoilery, spoiler, spoilerly section although I did read the title okay do you want now I'm gonna start talking about spoilers so if you do care about that bye um I gave this book three stars like it was it was fine it wasn't absolutely amazing it didn't completely wow me which is a, I'll get into that but I mean I would recommend it to people like it's a good interesting book um before we do go the people that are like spoilers no I do want to say if you are looking for a book about two people that like um, two unlikely lovers that meet each other and they only have one day to spend together and you get to see all the perspectives of the people they meet along the way and how it's impacting their personal lives. This isn't exactly the first book I would recommend to you. I would actually <laughs> recommend this one for you. Okay. I, I love this book. I love Nicola Yoon. I love I've read everything, everything, and this one. And I should look if she has more books, because I will definitely read them. She's a great author. I love her characters. They're so fascinating. Oh, this book is so freaking good. And it had like a better like payoff in the end. This book, it's like, hey, did you catch that? We had a payoff. And this one, it's like, no, this isn't actually like a payoff that wasn't that stupid. So, and, um, okay, um, that's, I really like this book. I think it does a better job of, like, showing how, like, little things you can do, little things you do, um, and, like, what big impacts they can have on, um, each other's, um, life, and this, instead of them both, like, dying at the end, it's these two that bump into each other, and one is getting deported that day, so that's their little journey. Oh, they're so cute. Their main, the main character's names is Natasha and Daniel. Oh, Daniel is so cute. Uh, yeah. This is girl guy. This is guy guy. If that matters to you. But love this book. Okay.
Okay, now, now really do leave if you're caring about spoilers and stuff, because now I'm gonna get more into that book, although I'm not gonna get, like, I'm not gonna go every shred of detail, but it was a good book. Uh, first things first in the non spoilery section. They actually do die at the end, which I have to give the author props for sticking with that and going off with um, killing his, his two main characters. Because I know there's like some books that um, don't do... How did that get there? That is not supposed to... What are you doing back here? I thought I had you on the other shelf. I love this series, but you don't belong right here, okay? Okay. I don't know what that was. Sorry. Um, but yeah, they both do die at the end, which is nice. So you don't have all this wasted feeling like you wasted all these ener all this energy being nervous that they were going to die, only for them to not actually die, which is kind of annoying. I'm not looking at anything. Okay. Um, um, but yeah. Um, Rufus and Mattino are both really sweet. Um, it's kind of, I did feel like how, um, like I totally understand why Mattino got on the last friend app, but I do feel like Rufus was kind of just like shoved into that plot point. Like he saw some graffiti and he's like, oh, it's for an app. Well, cool. I have nothing else to lose. Like, I thought that was less of, like, a, oh, that totally happened, but I guess he had to go through it somehow. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, Matino's dad being in coma was really sad. I also did, like, Lydia and Penny. Those were sweet characters. Um, I liked the whole Pluto thing. Like, that was really cute. The whole Pluto, that was adorable. Um... All I am thinking about is the ending. Oh, yeah, I want to talk about that. Okay, so there's this boy in the book. Rufus and Mattino have um, met each other, and they're trying to, like, get the most out of their day. So they go to this, like, foundation um, that's, like, make a moment, and it's, like, virtual reality stuff, like s swimming with the sharks or skydiving or, like, going through rapids. Like, it's supposed to be, like, you know, like, you could... It's supposed to give people like a chance to get like as many things off the bucket list as they possibly can on their last day, which I think is cool. But anyways, Rufus and Mattino go to the place and they're like, "Yo, I have, uh, I kind of let's let's go skydiving." And then they go skydiving and they're like, "Oh, skydiving! It's like virtual reality and stuff." And then they like leave and they're like, "That that wasn't actually that cool." But then later in the book, they go to like the World Travel Arena, arena which is kind of like try, like it's like a place where they like put up like it's basically Epcot, like in Disney World, it's Epcot, and they have like all these little little countries you can see and stuff. Although somehow they were able to put in a giant cliff into a pool, like a cliff. Like I just imagined like a cliff with like a pool at the bottom that you're able to jump off which I wouldn't be surprised if someone died doing that because it's supposed to be four deckers, which is what they call the people that are dying. But anyways, yeah, they have like a whole jungle inside or whatever. But anyways, they're like going on about like, oh my gosh, this place is so much better than make a moment. And it's so much better to be doing real things. And I'm like, but it's not really a real thing. Like you're not really in, what was it, Cuba that they were at? Yes, I think it was Cuba. And you're not really there jumping off an actual, like, you guys have, like, floaty arm things on. Like, it's, like, I didn't really see the big difference between the Make a Moment and the World Travel Arena. And I kind of didn't really want to read about it because it wasn't like, you know, them living their best life or, you know, taking chances because... I'm sure there must have been, I mean, they had lifeguards everywhere and floaties and stuff because they, even though their place is for deckers, you don't really want anyone dying while they're there, which I totally understand. But I don't know, that felt a little hollow to me. Um, oh, and Dyer, no, that's not her name. 
dire. <sighs> the lady that worked the um, travel agency thing, she had her own little like, like thing where like I'm always depressed and oh my gosh, this job is just awful. And that didn't really have a payoff. Like this had something similar in it, but it had a way better payoff. And it's like, I'm not like, worried that like the girl's gonna you know she's like oh I won't kill myself today but maybe next time like kind of this like she has her moment where she's like oh those boys look like the boys I saw earlier that went into my um your skydiving place you know they're probably still alive why should I look death claiming today but still I'm like what about tomorrow you know <laughs> when you don't see two boys that look like or two people that happen to look like your customers that you had earlier. That made me sad. And then there's this whole story about um, this one girl and like her boyfriend and her boyfriend works at Death Cast and she thinks that he's uh, playing a prank on her. So she doesn't believe that she got the alert today that she's actually gonna die. She's like, oh, it's just a joke because um, she broke up with him like they were engaged and she was like, okay I'm breaking up the engagement and he happened to work at death cast So she was like, oh my gosh, he's just mad at me And so she kind of just spends all her um, day kind of living normally, but she does get to see one of her favorite I think he was the actor um, So that was great. She like survived like a Explosion in a car crash, but still at the last moment she went to like this Athena Park in New York. This whole thing takes place in New York. And um, she's like, she called her fiance and she's like, is it a trick? And he's like, what, what, what's a trick? And she's like, oh my gosh, come for me. Oh my gosh, I want to see you one last time. And then he's like running over to see her. And that's like kind of the end of their story. And then there's also the guy that blew up the gym because why not? He was like a wrestler that had like a muscle problem and he is like my life ended when I was no longer able to wrestle anymore so therefore I'm gonna like literally end my life and take a few others down with me in that gym so he brings a makeshift bomb into the gym and just explodes everyone up almost killing our main characters, but really that doesn't matter to me. There was, okay, the point is, is that there was a few concerning things that I um, didn't exactly like. It was just kind of like, oh, and then there's this guy that's dying. And oh, there's that guy that's dying. Oh, and then there's that guy that's dying that didn't really have to be in the book. Like that explosion, it just kind of mildly inconvenienced them. It was just like, whoa, we survived that. We thought you were gonna die. It's also for you, the audience, to be like, oh, this is how they die because they go to Rufus and Matino, go to a bookshop that's like right next to the gym and they feel a little bit of the explosion, like enough to knock them off their feet and get like a little bit of glass everywhere. And you're like, oh, that's how they're going to die. But no, that's not how they die. And it's just like a moment where they're like, huh, you could have died there. And that also that one lady that thought her ex-fiance was tricking her to be like, you see, I'm totally not dying today because I could have died, but I didn't. And I just, I don't know if that was the best thing to include in the book if it wasn't going to be that big of a deal. Same with like the make a moment employee. I don't think that was the best thing to include in the book. It wasn't gonna be that big of a deal. And that's why I like this book better because it kind of ties in everything a little bit better. And that bothered me a little bit, as you can see. Um, Okay, do you know what? I will, oh, I'm gonna talk about the gang. The gang without a name, because they're the gang without a name. Um, it's, so Rufus has an ex-girlfriend, 
that got together with this other guy named Peck. And Rufus was like, no, I'm so mad. I wish I still had my girlfriend. And he grabs two of his Pluto's foster homeboys to come with him and they jump Peck and they beat him up and that's when Rufus gets alert while he's beating up Peck. And he's like, ugh, don't you go near Amy again or whatever. And Peck runs off. He has like comic books in his backpack that he left behind or something. And he's just like this really skinny guy. And like one of the Pluto's mentions that like, uh, Peck is part of the gang, and I was like, that kid's part of the gang? But apparently that kid was part of the gang. And the other person part of the gang was this one kid that had his shoes stolen when he was itty bitty, but he happened to run into Mattino, and Mattino gave him his shoes, and he was like, oh, thanks, man. And, but anyways, he was still bitter about someone stealing his shoes, so he got really good at punching and fighting and stuff, and now he's known as the Knockout King. And then the other guy that's part of the gang, this is like the third wheel triangle of the gang, is this one guy that's an adrenaline junkie and he loves running from cops. And he gets a call from Peck and Peck's like, hey, this kid beat me up, so do you want to go get him? And the adrenaline junkie's like, yeah. And he's like playing darts and he's like, I, I picture Rufus' head where the dart is and he hits bullseye like right between the eyes. And I'm like, why is Peck in this gang? Like, what does he have to offer? Like, these are two very strong, scary men. And then there's just skinny little Peck. And then his, his name is, nickname is Peck because his punches are so light and soft that they feel like Peck's. So there's that. Anyways, it turns out actually the whole reason why he is part of the gang is because he has access to the greatest weapon that can kill instantly. He base he has a gun. Peck has a gun. That's why he's in the gang. He has a gun. So they take the gun and they're like, we're gonna hunt down Rufus. And um, they find him in this club, which I like the club. That was actually kind of like a living in the moment thing. Uh, and they're like, hey, Rufus, I'm going to shoot you. And uh, Mattino is just like, no, and he punches one of them. And they all go running. And like the whole time, because this was this is the climax of the book, you're like, oh, Peck is going to kill him. That's how it started off. It started off with Rufus being Peck. That was the first time he saw Rufus. And this is how they die. And like even Mattino is involved with the gang because he gave the shoes to the one knockout king guy. And like that didn't even really pay off. Like the knockout king went to like punch uh Mattino, but then he like held back for a second as if he recognized him, and that was it. That was the entire payoff of that story. Anyways, Rufus and Mattino run and they go back to Mattino's apartment and they're like, oh, let's just stay in the bed. Let's just stay in his bed, Mattino's bed forever. And then we'll just be safe and we'll get through this day. But Mattino wakes up and he's like, I'm going to make some tea. And he goes, make some tea and the soap explodes and he dies. That's how he died. Um, it was like, it was kind of like the author kind of was like, hey, he's at the beginning before Mattino left his apartment. He left two notes to his two next door neighbors and one said like thanks for giving me a bunch of casseroles why I was so upset about my dad being in the coma and the other one he's like hey you don't have to come in the morning and fix the stove because I'm gonna be dead and the author I can just kind of I kind of felt the author in that moment patting himself on the back like I set it up and they didn't see it coming and I mean, it was set up a little bit, but it wasn't satisfying. And then Mattino was like, I mean, and he goes see Rufus dead. And then he sees Rufus, crap, Mattino's dead. Rufus was like, I'm going to go see Mattino's dad. He talks to him one last time, and then he's like walking away from the hospital. And then he gets hit by a car, which I thought was really tragic because his family died in a car accident that was actually very traumatic for Rufus and that was kind of like a plot point of them like overcoming their past and Rufus like 
you know, getting used to, like, water again, because apparently he couldn't deal with water. And he just gets hit by a car. Both were, like, very underwhelming. Didn't really like it. But I will give props to the fact that it wasn't because they met each other that they died. It was because, you know, they would have died if they just continued living their everyday life. Rufus still could have been hit by a car, and Matino probably still wanted tea, even if he was by himself in his house, and he would have been blown up. So, like, I do like the, like, you know, they were destined to die, even if they, if they met each other or not. I didn't like that their deaths were so underwhelming, though. But that's my opinion. Good book. Better book. Um, and we're not talking about, I mean, I love the series, okay? If you guys have read, you know, I hope I'm not spoiling anything for anyone that is currently reading that series. But yeah, thank you for watching, if anyone ever watches this. No one's gonna watch this. But, that's my thoughts, if you cared. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I don't know. I can't read your mind because you're not you right now. This is a pre-recorded video of myself that you're currently watching, if you weren't already aware. Yeah, this is the past and you're gonna be watching this in the future, so. That's not really mind-blowing. But anyways, bye.